Hello, FiSci family. We're going to talk about reaction rates and equilibrium today. Let's go! As we've been discussing in class already, reaction rates are just basically how quickly the reactants in the chemical equation are going to turn into a product. Some reactants are very, very quick, very, very violent. Think about rocket fuel burning. It's burning very violently, very explosively. Woo! But then some reactions are incredibly slow and could take weeks, months, years. Think of iron rusting. So the rate or the speed at which a reaction goes is called the reaction rate. The things that are going to affect the speed or the reaction rate itself would include everything listed here right now. If you increase your temperature, you're going to increase the kinetic energy of the particles, meaning that they're going to have a better chance of colliding into each other. And we know that when reactants collide into each other at just the right energy in just the right way, they're going to react. The same thing is going to be true if we increase the concentration of the reactants. By having more reactants in there, they have a better chance of knocking into each other and reacting, just like you in a crowded hall are more likely to collide with somebody. But what about surface area? Surface area is going to speed up a reaction as well because the smaller the pieces are, the more chance that you have for the reactants to interact with each other. Think about if something dissolving, like we've done an Alka-Seltzer tablet, crush it into a tiny, tiny powder, and that water that's in the cup when you pour the powder into it is going to be able to touch so much more of that substance more quickly. Why? Because there's a greater amount of surface area. What about something like agitation? That's just a fancy way for saying stirring. If we stir an object, we're going to force the reactants to interact with one another even more so. By doing that, you're going to increase the rate of reaction. And then finally, if you have gases interacting with each other on the reactant side, by smushing them together and increasing the pressure, you're going to force them to be closer together. Since they're closer together, they're more likely to interact. Since they're more likely to interact, they're more likely to react, which means that the reaction rate increases. Make sense? It should. Speaking of reaction rates, let's talk about two things. Something that's going to help speed up a reaction is a catalyst. A catalyst makes it easier for the reactants in a reaction to actually collide and react. The catalyst isn't going to physically change. It's just going to do something in order to help the reaction speed up. Sometimes it's going to get in the way of things that are blocking the reaction. Sometimes it will absorb things. But whatever it is, it's going to speed the reaction up. Platinum is something that's used in cars, which are called catalytic converters. Notice the catalyst is part of the word, catalytic. Catalytic converters, actually, as the exhaust from your engine goes outside of the car, the catalytic converter actually will break down some of the bad gases that shouldn't be emitted into the atmosphere. By doing that, you're exhausting a cleaner gas, which is better for the environment. So the platinum actually speeds up the reaction of breaking down gases that are bad for the environment. That's pretty handy. But the opposite of that is something called an inhibitor. An inhibitor is what's going to slow down or prevent a reaction from even happening. It makes it more difficult for the reactants in a reaction to actually collide with enough energy to create that reaction. Something that's very important to us are food preservatives like BHA. Food preservatives are actually going to slow down the spoiling of food. How? Why? Well, bacteria grows on the food and then wants to have a chemical reaction that's going to break and ripen the food. Sorry, break down and ripen the food. By having that food preservative in there, it's inhibiting or slowing down that reaction in order for the food to last longer. When we have a reaction, we usually think of it as just moving forward from reactants to products. But the actuality is, in reality, sometimes reactions move forward and backwards. So there's a forward and reverse reaction. If they are happening at the same rate, where reactants are turning to products, and products are turning back into reactants, we have what's called equilibrium. That's designated by that double arrow that you've seen before. We're used to the single arrow, where we're just talking about one direction for a reaction, and also a great band. But the double arrow is going to show that we're in equilibrium. We're moving forward and backwards. So that means that this potassium chlorate is going to break down into potassium chloride and oxygen. But it also means that the potassium chloride and oxygen will react 
to form potassium chlorate. It's reverse and forward reactions. When it happens at the same rate, again, we call that equilibrium. Le Chatelier's principle is a fancy way of saying that when objects are, I should say reactions are in equilibrium, whenever you put any type of stress on that equilibrium, meaning any type of change on either side of the equilibrium, it's going to shift to relieve that stress. So for example, by adding more KClO3, by adding more reactant, you are going to shift the reaction the other way because it's going to break down and balance out on the reactant side. So by adding more of this potassium chlorate, you are going to actually increase the rate or the amount of product that's being formed. Again, it's shifting to balance out that equilibrium. Besides that, temperature, pressure, concentration, and volume all are going to affect the equilibrium and put stress on it as well. In fact, when you add pressure to a system, all right, it's going to have the actual reactions flow towards the side that would create less gases, since gases are the ones that are affected by pressure. Concentration would just be adding more of one side of the equilibrium. Whatever side you add to, it shifts the reaction over the other side, or I should say shifts the equilibrium. All right, things to consider. Look up Le Chatelier's principle. We also have a couple videos linked on Canvas as well that'll help you out with that. This is just a very, very basic general idea of reaction rates and equilibrium. Hopefully it gives you an idea that not all reactions are just one way, but also that we can help speed up reactions by doing some things to the system. Vice versa, we can also uh, have equilibriums be affected and shifted from one side to the other by also doing some different things as well, by adding stresses to the system, like changing the temperature, pressure, concentration or volume. Thanks for listening. Best of luck. And don't forget, besides my videos, there's thousands of videos out there on YouTube. Try to find credible ones that can help you as well. Looking at the comments section can help you see how credible the video really is. The good thing about critics online is that they do pick apart presentations just like they could for mine, where you can see how we could improve our information or knowledge being spread. Best of luck.